Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Real quick, before I get into this video, I want to tell you about PopCultureZone.com. They are a website specializing in comic books, some of the hottest variants, and CGC comics. And for those raw comics, if you are shipping to the domestic United States, you only pay $4.99 flat rate shipping. PopCultureZone.com. Now on to the video. Speaking of Star Wars, El Beardo, we we got season three production of Mandalorian going on, right? <laughs> Do we ever? Uh, this was where did it go? Here we go. Mandalorian season three set photos features mysterious armored character. Let me swap over to a little bit better view of this real quick. Uh, I'm actually really excited for this because. Uh, my brain likes to pick away at some of this stuff. And despite the news earlier today that Rogue Squadron has been delayed, there's still plenty of Star Wars on the horizon with all the shows heading to Disney Plus. The Mandalorian Season 3 finally began filming two months ago in Los An Angeles. And now we get our first proper set photos. Now, uh, it's got some Mandalorian in a dressing room or something. Yeah. This is, this is, a, <laughs> this is a bit of a stretch to call this. Except the photo. gap. Yeah. This isn't, yeah. This isn't much of a photo. Um, credit to where credit is due on the screen there. B Spin Bulletin posted this on Twitter, and there's lots of talk about this online. So the cosplayer and... walked on the set. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like... trying on. Uh, oh, wrong, wrong yeah. door, wrong door. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm. I'm really excited about this. This has really got my energy flowing and my brain sparking and turning and twisting because. I feel like this is like a new faction of Mandalorians that we're going to run into. Just looking at the colors, the jetpack looks like a combination of Boba Fett versus one of the newer Mandalorian ones. It's definitely not Din Djarin's pack, and uh, that definitely doesn't have that gentleman doesn't have the really the right complexion to be uh, Pedro Pascal. So I it's just looking double. at this, I feel like we're going to run into a new faction of Mandalorians, and I'm really excited about that because that means we're growing and expanding like they've talked about. You know what I mean? I think the more exciting thing is the news that we're seeing more stuff with Mark Hamill or Luke and Grogu, right? I think that's to me even more exciting than this. Yeah, I missed that. I, mean, I didn't I, see that. I, it was, it was. Uh, if you go back up to the top, maybe I, I saw something weird. If you go back up to the top of this page, there you go. Keep going. There you go. The Mandalorian right there. Go ahead. The Mandalorian new behind the scenes photo shows Mark Hamill filming scenes with Grogu. Is that old? Do you not see that on the right there? Oh, yeah. This is uh, August 2nd, okay. 2021. Okay. Okay. That makes more sense. All right. So I think that was the. You got some hellacious eyes if you could read that. I was like, <laughs> holy shit. I'm just. <laughs> um, no, I. I think it's awesome if they are getting into some new characters. I mean, I, I, that's what I, I love it. I love to see the new characters and, you know, just see how they do them. Um, it, that, I, that's part of it for me, you know? So and what, what double, o, double O says right there is, is, is perfect. Cause I think it's brought a, a lot of people back to star Wars because yeah. you know, face it, Kathleen Kennedy or I, it. I didn't not like, the latest Luke trilogy, but it wasn't, it wasn't man. What Mandalorian Mandalorian brought back that, that feeling as a child when you, when you, I didn't see star Wars in, in theaters. Cause I was, I was born in 77, which makes me still old, but I did see empire strikes back in return of the Jedi. And, and Mandalorian was one of those, when that show hit Disney plus it brought back that feeling as a kid of star Wars. Yes. It's yeah. Best way to put it. It's a, yeah. Best way to put it. I mean, it, the closest I got to it was that first JJ Abrams trailer for force awakens. And then I was like, this was like new hope all over again, <laughs> but yeah. I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for the new characters and, and to touch on what you said, Tom Berlin is when they introduce new characters, I like how they, they, uh, they open the canon a little bit more and me, you know, I'm not, I, I'll fully admit I'm not the big Star Wars geek. I, I know what I know. I don't dive as deep into the lore. I don't read all the novels. I don't, you know, I've played some of the games. I don't know everything Star Wars. So when something is new to me, I think that's that's great. And then of course, 
probably late to the game because people have been like, ah, I've been buying up all those. So it, it's fun for the hunt. And then if it's like out of my price range, I'm like, ah, screw that. But I do like the excitement that it brings and bringing new characters into the show and, and opening up that Star Wars lore. And then I just hope they just, uh, well, I, I don't think they will with Favreau, but you just, I don't want to be disappointed. Well, one of the things that came out also uh, that you, you, you hit on a little bit, Andy, is the fact that they canceled that Rogue Squadron movie. And now people are starting to talk Rumorville about that being replaced with some old Republic um, series, maybe, or show, uh, which would be amazing because I think that the old Republic stuff <laughs> is going to introduce some really great characters that people will fall in love with immediately. Um, it'll, like you said, opening up that canon to these amazing characters, these new characters. Uh, a lot of us know about some of those characters, but not everybody does. Um, like you, like you said, Brian, and, and some of those old Republic characters are just too cool to not see on the big screen. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think that's the draw of star Wars too. Like, where is there another universe like yeah. this? Like you there's think so what edibles was George Lucas eating back then. <laughs> <laughs> and where did he get them? It's the main yeah. question. I need a few of those, yeah. but I mean, it's just so much that they can do. It's it's unbelievable, you know. I mean, think about it. They could drop Rogue Squadron. They could go a total different way, and I mean, not even make a dent in how much material is still left out there uh, that could be done, you know. So um, it always reminds me of that quote with Kathleen Kennedy when back in. Years ago, when the Luke saga was first continuing, he's like, "There's just not that much material to to, to go off of." Yeah, right. What, what was she on? Is the main question. Thank God for Favreau and Filoni. George, man. George is probably like, "Here, have some of these." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you the light. <laughs> yeah. See, you guys talk about the introduction of new characters and stuff like that in the expanded universe. That's why this article excites me so much. Is just think about a new faction of Mandalorians that we haven't met that they run into. What does that mean? That means we're going out, we're traveling, we're exploring new areas. And even if it's not a, a big headliner character that we're looking to get introduced, it's a foot in the door and we're ready to kick in that door and really get into experience, not experiencing, but um, look at this bounty hunter side of things. When you start getting into that thought process of what does that lead into and who are you going to meet now? And the possibilities seem endless. And this just seems like, we're not just tiptoeing through that door anymore. We're about ready to kick through it in the next couple of years with the Sokatana coming in and uh, everything else that you guys Obi One. We should be getting yep. an Obi One trailer soon too. Yep. I'm actually excited about the Obi One. So am I. I'm excited to see Hayden Christensen back in this universe. I want to see Anakin. I think that they really screwed him big time in in how how they played him off, and he was kind of a punk. And I he think was a Anakin. Yeah, I you know maybe he's better now, but you know I just want to see that. I want to see Anakin get. It doesn't even have to be Hayden Christensen. I shouldn't say Hayden Christensen. I want to see Anakin. I want to see Anakin get just some cool storyline. Um, I want to see cool like you know I talked about this uh, the other night where you know one of the things in Rebels that we loved so much was that that we got to find out the you know the final battle between Ahsoka and and Anakin you know and we all wanted to see that and then I could totally see them bringing him back in Ahsoka you know to talk to her and we all want to see that you know that's something we all want to see we all want to see him you know say whether he was sorry or you know why he did what he did but you also want to see that cool Vader stuff that we're getting in the comics that badass Vader you know the the be, the be, baddest Jedi and the baddest Sith ever. You know. Do you feel the pendulum is shifting from MCU to Star Wars U, or do you think there's enough enough space? You know, yeah, that's a dumb question to say. You can't like both, but it seems like that momentum is starting to shift. Star Wars, where as the MCU was when it's early, you know, post first Avengers movie, the hype. You're starting to see that with Star Wars. But as of right now, it's all small screen. Yes. Yep.